The Kraft Foods Company, makers of superfined Kraft Oil, presents Willard Waterman as the Great Gildersleeve. The Great Gildersleeve is brought to you, partially transcribed, by the Kraft Foods Company. When I tell you that wonderful new Kraft Oil is a super-fined oil, here's what that means. Kraft Oil has been refined to the highest degree of purity and lightness. And that's just why it's a better oil for your homemade salad dressings and baking. Superfining gives Kraft Oil lighter body to blend faster and better with other ingredients. Next time you're shopping, get super-fined Kraft Oil for finer baking and delicious homemade salad dressings. <laughs> Every year along about this time, Christmas preparations get into high gear. On his way to and from the office every day now, the great Gildersleeve has noticed the traffic getting heavier. Mail pouches are getting heavier, too. And every morning, the water commissioner's mailbox is stuffed. By George, I feel sorry for the mailman. I can hardly carry what he left here. Uh, let's see now. Doc Morton P. Gildersleeve. Commissioner Gildersleeve. Me, me, me. Me? Leroy? Leroy! Yeah? You have some mail. Me? 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 Bertie? Yes, sir? You have a letter. Yes, sir. What's for me, Uncle? Who's it from? What is it? Well, it's a card from the Bijou Theater. It says special kiddie show Saturday morning. Oh, for corn's sake. I haven't been a kid for over a year. <laughs> <laughs> well, give it to me. I may go myself. Oh, brother. Bertie got something there, you say? You bet. Here you are, Bertie. Thank you, sir. My, ain't that something? Don't get carried away, Bertie. It may be for the kiddie show. <laughs> uh, it looks like it's from the bank. <laughs> yes, sir. This is my Christmas saving club. You belong to a club? This is the best kind of club, Leroy. This club pays you. Yeah? Of course, you got to pay them first. Oh. Yeah, you pay in so much a week, Leroy, and just before Christmas, they send you what you've saved. My, my, ain't this pretty? $25. Gosh. Yes, sir. $25 to spend any way Bertie wants to. Bertie's loaded. <laughs> Gosh, I wish I had that kind of dough. Well, if you save a few pennies every week, next year you'll have extra money. I can't buy this year's presents on next year's money. I know, I'll get a job after school. Okay, Unc? Capital idea. Glad to see you're so ambitious. That's me, ambitious. Now, where will I get a job where I don't have to work too hard? <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I know. I'll ask Mr. Peavy for a job delivering prescriptions. No, Leroy, I'd rather you didn't ask my friends. Mr. Peavy's my friend, too. Well, he might feel obligated to hire you, whether he needs you or not. Yeah. Oh, what a... <laughs> I don't want to discourage Leroy about getting a job for the holidays. But I think I should let Peavy know I don't expect him to hire the boy. Hello, Peavy. Yeah, hello, Mr. Jonas Lee. What can I do for you today? Peavy, you don't need anybody to deliver prescriptions, do you? Running a little short of Christmas money, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Peavy. Well, I guess I can use you if you can ride a motor scooter and ring a doorbell. Peavy, I'm not interested. Well, then why do you come in and ask? I came in to inform you that Leroy's interested in a part-time job. Yes? But I don't want you to feel obligated to give him one. Well, I don't need a delivery boy, but I could use a good salesman during the Christmas rush. Yeah, Leroy couldn't handle that. Still, I, I hate to turn Leroy down. Well, how about offering him a job on a commission basis? Leroy's smart enough to know he wouldn't make any money that way. <laughs> Selling on a commission basis was very discouraging to me as a young man. You tried it? I'm here to tell you. My first job was peddling potato peelers. I demonstrated those things from morning to night. He didn't make any money, huh? No, but I peeled more potatoes than any ten soldiers on KP. <laughs> yeah? Hi, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Leroy. Hi, Unc. 
Skunk. Hello, my boy. What can I do for you, Leroy? Mr. Peavy, I've got a business proposition I want you to make me. <laughs> you don't say. How about an after-school job? Well, I... I'd work hard. I imagine you would, And I wouldn't but... hang around the fountain and eat up all the profits. Strictly business. Well, What I do you don't... say? Well, you won't give me a chance to say anything. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, don't be such an eager beaver, Leroy. Let Mr. Peavy explain things to you. Oh, I forgot. Mr. Peavy, I don't want you to give me the job just because Unc and I are good friends of yours. And good customers. <laughs> <laughs> well, to speak plainly, Leroy, what I could use best here is an experienced salesman. Yeah? Uh, about the only way you could work for Mr. Peavy, my boy, is on a commission basis. Commission basis? How much money is that? Mm, it all depends. You don't make anything unless you sell something. Oh. Peavy tried it once, Leroy. How'd you do, Mr. Peavy? Not very well. And I have two dozen potato peelers to prove it. <laughs> a, a pretty discouraging proposition, Leroy. Nothing coming in unless you get lucky and happen to sell something. Well, on the other hand, the more you sell, the more money you make, huh? Well, yeah. I'll take the job. <laughs> Well, Bertie, Leroy's going to work for Mr. Peavy. That's good. How much is he going to make? He's working strictly on commission. Uh-oh, that's bad. <laughs> Peavy and I tried to discourage him, but you know how Leroy is. Yes, sir. There are plenty of jobs he can get around town where they'll pay him regularly. Yes, sir. Hey, Bertie, why don't you talk to Leroy? I'll do that. I'll catch him while he's in the kitchen shining his shoes. <laughs> All right. Good luck, Bertie. Uh... Uh, Leroy? Yeah? Your uncle tells me you're going to work for Mr. Peavy. Yeah, keen, huh, Bertie? Well, it ain't no use going to work just to be working. How much money are you going to make? Five percent on everything I sell. Leroy, Bertie's a little slow on her arithmetic. How much is five percent of nothing? What do you mean nothing? I'm going to sell like crazy. I hope so, but you're just a boy. What do you know about selling people when they come to a store? Oh, there's nothing to it. They ask for something, you wrap it up, take their money, and put it in the cash register. Bing! Then Mr. Peavy gives me my cut. Now that's the rosy side. But Mr. Peavy's drugstore ain't the busiest place in town. And if you're on commission, you got to sell a lot of people. Oh, I've got angles. Bertie, what would you do if I told you somebody was going to surprise you with a real nice Christmas present? I'd be very happy. Uh, yeah, yeah, but what would you do about it if you knew who was giving you the present? Naturally, I'd have to get them something nice, too. Oh, boy, it's going to work. See you later, Bertie. Okay. <laughs> hmm, let me just figure this out now. If he sells somebody a present to give me and tells me about it so I can buy a present to give them, then he gets 5% on both presents. <laughs> that ain't bad. <laughs> Bertie? Yes, Mr. Gilsey? Did you convince Leroy he'd be a silly boy to take the job? No, sir. Oh? He convinced me he's the smartest silly boy I ever saw. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on here? Prescription typewriter, Mr. Peavy. Well, that's all right, Leroy. What have you been up to? Just writing some business announcements. That's all. Announcing my business connection with you. <laughs> now, now, listen to this. Dear Mayor Terwilliger. You're writing to the mayor? Well, sure, he knows me. Besides, he's Unc's boss. Mm, yes. I say, Your Honor, this is to inform you that I have a job at Mr. Peavy's through the holidays. Since you're so popular and probably will get presents from all your city commissioners this year, I would like to have your business when you buy presents for them, which you no doubt will do. Are they all giving the mayor a present? Well, I'm pretty sure they're going to. Oh, that would be nice. All right, you don't mind this P.S., do you? Yeah, what is it? When you come in the store, please buy from me. I'm on commission. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if you drum up the business, you should get the commission. Uh, swell, I'll put Christmas seals on them and mail them right out. Well, I'm glad to see you use Christmas seals, Leroy. They brighten up a letter and brighten up a lot of lives at the same time. Yeah. Hmm, here's your uncle. Yeah, let me wait on him. Hello, Petey. Mr. Gilbert, please. I see your new salesman is on the job. Yes, he is. Good evening, sir. May I show you something? <laughs> I just came in to see how you're getting along, Leroy. You mean you're not going to buy anything? No, no. You know I've done my Christmas shopping. Leroy, if you'll watch the front of the store, I'll go back and make a prescription. Sure. Uh, make yourself at home, Mr. Gilbert, please. Yeah, thanks, Petey. Hey, Yunk. Let's walk up front where Mr. Peavy can't hear us. Oh? Aren't things going well? They will. What's on your mind? Unc, if you heard somebody might give you something nice for Christmas, would you buy something for them? Well, of course, I'd be embarrassed not to reciprocate. That means you'd buy it, huh? (laughs) Certainly. I'd be delighted to know about it. Well, I'm delighted to tell you you might get a box of cigars from Mr. Peavy this year. Really? You better be prepared for it. Well, thanks for the tip, my boy. That's okay. What are you going to pick out for him? Well, any suggestions? Sure. He needs a new fountain pen. His is all clogged up. Oh? Now, I've got a bargain here for three ninety nine. dollars Look, it writes in three colors. Yeah, we'll wrap it up and bring it home with you, Leroy. Sure. And put it on my bill. Wouldn't you like to pay cash? Why cash? Well, I don't want to wait until you pay your bill to get my commission. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I see. Well, here you are, my boy. I'll get your change. Make a sale, did you, Leroy? Yeah! Just buying a cigar, Peavy. <laughs> Give me a cigar so you won't get wise. Sure, I got 5% on them, too. <laughs> <laughs> Another sale, Leroy? You said it! Yes, yes. Now here's your brand and here's your change. Anything else? No, I think I'd better get out of here. <laughs> so long, Peavy! Goodbye, Mr. Gilbert, See you around, now. Oh, boy. Uh, Mr. Peavy. Yes, Leroy? You heard the cash register ring twice. Yes, I did, and it was a very merry sound. Aren't you curious about what Unc bought besides the cigar? What did he buy? I can't tell you. You you can't? But I think you ought to know you're getting a pretty nice gift from somebody. (laughs) Did did somebody just leave here? How did you know? (laughs) I guess I'm psychic. Well, it's nice of Mr. Gildersleeve to remember me. I, I'll have to think of something for him. He smokes cigars by the box. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know of anything that would make him happier than a box of cigars. Yeah, shall I wrap them for you? You might as well, I guess. Good. That'll be three sixty. Uh, wait <laughs> a minute, Leroy. What? I'm not in the habit of paying in this store. Oh. Oh, but since I made the sale, I get the five percent, don't I? Yeah, that's logical. Putting me on commission was a great idea, huh, Mr. Peavy? <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve will be right back. Now, from the famous Kraft Kitchens comes an easier way to make a fruitcake. It's fruitcake made with Kraft oil. And with Kraft's special new recipe, fruitcake is almost as easy to make as an everyday cake. In a moment, I'll tell you where to send for this new recipe. But first, let me tell you about one of its secrets, superfined Kraft oil. New Kraft oil brings to cakes, pies, all of your baking, a lighter-bodied liquid shortening. Lighter-bodied because it's made by an exclusive superfining process to make it blend better with other ingredients. Take your cake batter. Kraft oil blends so thoroughly with the ingredients that every last crumb of baked cake contains shortening. The result? You always get moist, lighter-textured cakes whenever you bake with superfine Kraft oil. As for Kraft's new fruit cake, it brings together all those good candied fruits and nuts you want in a holiday cake. You can bake it in a high-tube pan or in loaf pans, or even in little muffin tins, making bite-sized individual fruit cakes. Best of all, it tastes rich and wonderfully delicious without being aged. For this new, easier fruit cake recipe, write to Kraft Kitchens, Kraft Foods Company, Chicago 90, Illinois. 
drop us a line tonight. And tomorrow, get the most wonderful oil ever created for baking and homemade salad dressings. Get superfine craft oil. Well, since Leroy took a part-time job at Peavy's Pharmacy through the holidays, he's become quite a businessman. He's up bright and early this Saturday morning, anxious to finish breakfast and be on his way. More hot cake, Leroy? Mm. Mm, no thanks, Bertie. I gotta get down to my office. Your office? Well, that's what I call Mr. Peavy's desk where I check my mail. You getting mail down there? Well, sure. I sent out a lot of business letters. I'm getting results, too. You're a go-getter, all right. Yeah. Chief Gates and Floyd the Barber are exchanging gifts, and that's never happened before. Of course, you didn't put them up to it. Well, I encouraged them a little. You know, Bertie, it's funny how much people begin liking somebody the minute they know they're going to get a present from them. <laughs> well, my boy, you were up early this morning. Yeah. Hi, Unc. Hi. Good morning, Bertie. Good morning, Mr. Gillsleeve. I'll go get your breakfast. Thank you, Bertie. Would you excuse me, Unc? I've got to get downtown. Well, I suppose so. You couldn't wait and have breakfast with your old uncle? Oh, I'm in business. i got to be on the ball. I'm not working for the city like you. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the paper? Here, I've read it already. Oh, what happened to Dick Tracy? Search me. I just checked the financial page. <laughs> financial page. Oh, my goodness. See you at dinner, Unc. All right, my boy. So long, Bertie. Bye, you It's 8.15. If I hurry, I can be there by the time Mr. Peavy opens and starts selling stuff. Hello, Leroy. Oh, hi, Mr. Cooley. You're bringing eggs early this morning. You're out early, too. Yeah. I didn't think anybody got up before the chickens except the egg man. <laughs> well, I'm working at Mr. Peavy's. Yeah, see you later. Hey, I don't have to wait till I get down to the store to sell something. Mr. Cooley! Yes, Leroy? I was just thinking, does Unc have your home address? He did have. Why? Well, Christmas is coming, you know. This is the time of year everybody's supposed to give everybody a present. Oh, Mr. Gildersleeve shouldn't do that. Oh, he may not, but he always has something for the mailman and the milkman. Why should he forget the eggman? He shouldn't. Thanks for telling me, Leroy. That's okay. I'm glad I ran into you. I'm glad I ran into you, too. <laughs> Look at your money in this cash register, Leroy. Yeah, business has been good today. Well, you men counting your money? Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Hi, Unc. Thanks to Leroy, I'm about to make a special trip to the bank with a bag of money. Good. Leroy, we better be thinking of a little something for the egg man. Yeah? After you left this morning, he came in trying to find out what I'd like. No kidding. <laughs> He's an awfully nice little fellow. Yeah. <laughs> Seems to think a lot of me. Fellow doesn't know how many friends he has until Christmas time. That could be. Seems everybody I know is giving me something. <laughs> and I've never felt so generous toward everybody. Well, a lot of people have come in here feeling that way. Yeah, it's working like a charm. What? I mean, uh, the way everybody's got the holiday spirit. Yeah, well, it's contagious. <laughs> By the way, Leroy, I haven't bought a gift for Miss Tuttle. You don't want to forget your girlfriend. How is Miss Tonto? Lovely. I'm on my way up there now. Leroy, someday at school, I wonder if you can find out what kind of perfume she uses. Oh, sure. I'll find out the scent for 5%. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd hint around myself, but she's a school teacher and might see through me. <laughs> Guess I'd better get on up there. So long, Aunt. Uh, Mr. Gildersleeve, if you're going my way, you can help me carry this sack of money to the bank. Uh, be careful with it. Five percent of it's mine. <laughs> don't, don't worry, Leroy. He's quite a little businessman, isn't he, Pete? Yes, he is. So he's going to give her perfume. Wonder how much I'll make on that. Better look at a bottle. Twenty-five dollars an ounce? Why wait until I get to school to swap this sale? Uh, 
Hello? Miss Tuttle? Yes? This is Leroy Forrester. Oh, hello, Leroy. I've been trying to call you. I'm afraid my line's been busy. Well, I want to ask you something before your steady gets there. Uh, my steady? Yeah, my uncle. <laughs> Well, Leroy, that's hardly the proper term you use. Your uncle and I are just good friends. Well, you must be the best friend he's got. Why do you say that? Well, gosh, $25 an ounce? What? I don't understand. Well, Miss Tuttle, I guess I'll have to tell you, because you can't afford to make a mistake at these prices. So, uh, what kind of perfume do you use? Perfume? Oh, I, uh, like the more subtle scents. Name one. Well, Distant Star is nice. Distant Star? You can tell it from way off, huh? <laughs> uh, Leroy, your uncle really shouldn't give me anything. He wants to. Oh, what a wonderful gift. Of course, this was supposed to be a surprise, Miss Tuttle. And it is in a way because you don't know how many ounces you're going to get. Good heaven. Incidentally, if you're buying any gifts, I'm selling for Mr. Peavy. Oh, really? Oh, excuse me, Leroy. Someone's at the door. Uh, yeah, I heard it. I'll hang up so you can let Unc in. Bye. <laughs> Bye. What a fabulous gift. I'm glad, Leroy. Let me know. I'll have to get something for Mr. Gildersleeve. Miss Tuttle. Oh, uh, just a moment, Throckmorton. Oh, I never called him that before. Oh, let me straighten this coffee table. Coming. Hello, Throckmorton. Well, Miss Tuttle, you look radiant. <laughs> Must be because I'm excited. You are? Come in. Uh, thank you. Uh, uh, Grace. Well, I knew it. I just didn't know if I should say it. <laughs> Please do. Thank you, Grace. <laughs> Here, let me take your hat and coat. Uh, can I fix you some tea? Tea? Why don't you take this big, comfortable chair? Oh, thank you. Mind if I smoke? Gracious, no, I love your cigars. Uh, let me light it for you. Would you? Here's a match. <laughs> oh, you, uh, you don't have a, a lighter, Throckmorton? No, just a book of matches. I lost my lighter. Oh. Puff now. Well, I'm, well, I'm puffing. <laughs> you should have a cigar lighter. Well, you're the best cigar lighter I know. <laughs> Well, Grace, what will we do this afternoon? Well, do you mind taking me downtown? Oh, not at all. I thought I'd finished my Christmas shopping, but I find I haven't. Well, let's go. We might stop by Peavy's. Leroy's working there. I know. Oh? Uh, here, let me help you with your coat. Oh, thank you. Mm, Betty perfume. Mm. <laughs> About perfume, Throckmorton If you ever have occasion to buy it uh, Please be practical uh, Practical? Don't buy too large a bottle at $25 an ounce $25 a... Leroy, we haven't been so busy, and I haven't had time to ring up all the sales. Yeah, we've been very busy, but I don't get it. All of a sudden, my customers are coming in, and they won't let me wait on them. Well, they're sort of confidential sales. But gosh. Hello, Mr. Phoebe. Yeah, hello, Mr. Cooley. Oh, boy, the Eggman again. Hi, Mr. Cooley. What can I do for you? If you don't mind, I think I'd like Mr. Peavy to wait on me this time. Hello, Leroy. Well, I'll be happy to help you. Do you mind stepping up to the front of the store? You're the customer. How do you like that? I lost another one. Hello, Peavy. Hello, Mr. Peavy. Well, hello, Miss Tuttle, Mr. Gildersleeve. Yeah, and Cooley. What are you doing here? Oh, just helping out Santa Claus. Hello, Miss Tuttle. Hello, Mr. Cooley. I I'll be with you in a moment. Hey, I'll take care of them. Hi, Unc. Hi, Miss Tuttle. Well, thank you, Leroy, but this is something I have to see Mr. Peavy about. You too? What am I supposed to do? Uh, Leroy, you might go to the back room and open some of the packing cases. Me open packing cases? Go ahead. Mind your employer, Leroy. I'm not employed. I'm on commission. <laughs> <laughs> now, Miss Tuttle. Gosh. A minute ago, I was at the top, making money hand over fist. Now I'm at the bottom, opening packing cases. Where's that crowbar? Leroy. 
Yeah? What's the matter, my boy? Well, I had a good thing going, but nobody lets me wait on them anymore. Well, I happen to know the reason Miss Tuttle didn't let you wait on her. Is she's buying you a gift. Yeah? Phoebe tells me that's what the Eggman is doing. And all your friends. You mean they're all giving me presents? Yep. They appreciate the little tips you gave them. Hey, that was pretty slick, huh? Slick? Letting everybody know they were getting presents so they'd buy something for the other fella. So that's what you've been up to. Yeah. Well, I guess it hasn't hurt anything. Everybody seems happy. Especially me. I got all my commission money and a lot of presents besides. Well, I'm afraid you won't end up with much money, Leroy. I won't? Now you have to buy presents for everybody who's giving something to you. Oh! <laughs> Great Gildersleeve will be back in just 30 seconds. When you buy an oil for baking or homemade salad dressings, don't settle for anything less than craft oil. Only craft oil is super fine, and that gives it lighter body to blend better with other ingredients. Takes you only a minute or two to make perfect French dressings. As for your baking, you'll be proud of your moist, airy cakes, pie crusts that are crisp and flaky. Tomorrow, get the most wonderful oil ever created for homemade salad dressings and baking. Lighter-bodied craft oil. Well, Leroy, are you glad you took this job with Mr. Peavy? Sure. He sold a lot of merchandise. Yeah, I made a lot of commissions. But I'll end up with nothing by the time I buy presents for all my friends. I'm not the big-shot businessman I thought I was. Well, now, Leroy, I'm going to help you out a little. Here. Here's five dollars. Five dollars? Gee, thanks, Unc. Well, what's it for? Well, Miss Tuttle has never been more cordial to me. I uh, appreciate your phoning her about the perfume. Hi, <laughs> you're swell, Unc. And so are you, Mr. Peavy. I'm going to buy all my presents in your store. My, my, that'd be nice. Oh, uh, by the way, Mr. Peavy... I understand the employees at Hogan Brothers get 10% off. You don't change. Yeah. <laughs> You're not going to let Hogan Brothers get ahead of you, are you? No, I, I'm not. <laughs> Keen, that's 10% I'll make. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> and then if I sell everything to myself, my commission is 5%. That's a total of 15%. Hey, I'm doing all right again. <laughs> oh, what a boy. Good night, folks. <laughs> the Great Gildersleeve is played by Willard Waterman. The show is written by John Elliott and Andy White and is partially transcribed. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley... Lillian Randolph, Mary Ship, Bud Steffen, and Dick Legrand. Musical compositions by Jack Meekin. This is John Heaston saying good night for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next week and every week for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. One of the most important jobs we Americans have is telling people behind the Iron Curtain the truth about the free world. And there's a way that you can take a personal part in this campaign. That's by supporting the Crusade for Freedom. When you contribute to the Crusade for Freedom, you're helping expand Radio Free Europe and Radio Free Asia. There are two citizen-sponsored organizations that are daily smashing the Iron Curtain with messages of freedom and hope. Keep these important organizations alive by joining the Crusade for Freedom in your community. Tonight, play You Bet Your Life on NBC.